They've increased us another 25 basis points. The prime rate is now 7.2%, depending on what angle you're looking at this from. From the perspective of the Bank of Canada, within six months, this will have proved to have been very successful at tightening the economy. I think if you're looking at it from the perspective of the borrower, this will be the straw that broke the camel's back. I think not just because of the interest rate increase itself, but because of what it signaled to the market. Depending on what data you were looking at, like for instance, you know, the last episode we were talking about the difference between CPI and PPI, how CPI is the consumer price index and it is more of a lagging indicator of inflation. PPI is the producer price index and it is more of a leading indicator of inflation. So I think depending on what you're looking at, if you're looking at more of the leading indicators, there's a real strong case to be made for holding rates where they are because the monetary restraint we've been adding on to this system is taking effect right now and it continues to take effect, the magnitude of which still hasn't been felt in the market. And those leading indicators are showing that it is taking effect. You can make a very clear argument for pausing the rate hikes based on the leading indicators, but some of the lagging indicators like the CPI number and that most recent employment growth number that we saw clearly outline a case for raising interest rates. So I think if you're the Bank of Canada, you're so scared that the market loses confidence in you fighting inflation that if the market is expecting, like it was, we are at 65% probability within the economists that were surveyed that that's the market. The market's expecting interest rates to increase. Interest rates have to increase. And if they don't increase, then it probably sends a soft on inflation message to the market. And that is no good, right? Like that would have resulted in a hot fall market for real estate, which is the last thing that the Bank of Canada wants to see. There was another announcement from OSFI that OSFI is going to change the amount of capital required to be held on the books by the big banks for mortgages whose amortizations are now exceeding that 35 year term. I mean, if you think about that now, that is going to make the banks highly motivated to get those borrowers out of those extended amortizations. That may be the bigger story than the interest rate hike. Because if you think about it, these hikes are having a bit of a muted effect on the Canadian consumer. Why? 25% of all mortgages are now in these extending amortizations. That 25% represents the most vulnerable, the ones that are kind of on the cusp of making that decision to sell their home, meaning flood the market with supply. So increasing interest rates is slowing the economy down, but the full impact of it isn't really being seen because those who are most vulnerable are being insulated by the Canadian banks. So now OSFI is telling the Canadian banks, you can keep them on your books. They're not saying you can't keep them on their book, but you need to allocate more capital as a reserve, essentially, to hold on to if you want to hold on to those loans on your book. So you better believe those banks are going to be combing through those books, looking to take people off and ex extend their amortization. That Those people are going to get letters in the mail saying, in order to normalize your monthly mortgage payment has to increase by 50 60, 70 percent. That will create more supply in the market. That will create more pain, unfortunately. I mean, hopefully it gets sopped up, but I think that's a really big story, right? These things kind of both came out in lockstep. I think when we look back on it, the impact of that OSFI change is going to be pretty significant.